I am Giacomo Chiesi, and I lead Chiesi Global Rare Diseases, which is part of the Chiesi Group. Uh, Chiesi is a pharmaceutical company. We're full integrated. We have everything from manufacturing to research and development to commercial operations, patient advocacy, medical, um, and so on, right? We also have a long story and history of commitment to the rare disease community, which culminated uh, with the foundation, the creation of Chiesi Global Rare Diseases around the, um, the beginning of 2020. Um, the goal of the study uh, was to basically quantify the cost of rare diseases and to show the economic impact of these rare diseases on European citizens who are impacted by these diseases when treatments are either available or are not available. As I mentioned, this is the second report we author. This comes out in 2023. And about two years after we released the first report, which was not about Europe, and instead it was about the United States, there are anywhere between 25 million, 25 and 30 million people impacted by a rare disease in the, in the United States. And because we're speaking about Europe today, there are about uh, 35, 36 million people affected by a rare disease in, in Europe. The majority of these diseases have no approved treatment. It's about 95%. 95% of the diseases, of the rare diseases, don't have an approved therapy. And therefore, we believe this is not just a huge med diagnostic or medical challenge, but also ultimately, given the vast amount of people impacted, a significant societal challenge. And we wanted to increase the awareness of this for everyone. Um, so we assess the economic burden of rare diseases by studying a lot of these diseases. You know, we're talking about hundreds of diseases to then select a certain specific number, you know, narrow the, the large number down to a more manageable number. And we ultimately selected 23 rare diseases. And we decided to study them in an uh, initial sample of three European countries, which are Germany, France, and Italy. The selected diseases uh, and their corresponding therapy areas uh, are based on a lot of criteria and uh, um, a lot of research. The criteria include uh, the degree of unmet need, the relative importance of uh, um, patient advocacy groups and how well these diseases are known, are, are known, I'm sorry, the interest in the scientific community, the prevalence, the um, burden of the disease, and so on. The report also investigates the nature of the costs that impact society when there is a, you know, when a rare disease is evaluated, and we split the costs into direct indirect and mortality related costs. We evaluate the cost and the societal burden of this diseases compared to uh, more prevalent disorders. And then doing scenario analysis, uh, we also compare the economic burden of these diseases in a situation where there is a treatment versus a situation where there is no treatment. If you look at the categories of the burden, you are able to distinguish essentially three different areas. The first one is what you would normally call direct costs. Direct costs um, represent the cost of the medication, the cost of treatment, you know, your prescription drug, the cost of medical procedures, the cost of hospitalization, the cost of uh, physician visits, um, all those the costs that are direct, directly related to trying to solve the problem. Then there's a second type of burden, a second category of costs, which we call the indirect costs. Some of these costs are, for example, represented by the loss of productivity of a family member or a caregiver 
who takes care of an impacted person, uh, the work loss of the impacted person as well, um, any costs related to changes that the family needs to make to the home to accommodate uh, the person, the impacted person and his or her or their new life. Traveling costs, accommodation costs for specialized medical visits or participation in clinical trials. The third component is mortality. Mortality costs is related to the fact that um, society is impacted not just um, you know from a you know from a feeling perspective, from a human perspective, but it's also impacted financially because the value generated by that person disappears and therefore financially, the sum of the future cash flows that that person would have been able to create for his or her family and society disappears. Rare diseases typically incur uh, a much higher uh, cost burden on average than more prevalent diseases. On average, and I, I want to be very careful, right? On average, across the 23 diseases that we studied and we calculated the burden for or of, the average cost burden on a per patient per annum, on a per patient per year basis, is about 107,000 euros. So again, that's per patient per year. If you take a look at a more a set of more prevalent diseases. And I'll clarify what I mean by that. Uh, the average is about 7,000 euros per patient per year. So the ratio between the two gives you a multiplier of about 15 times. We also found that in the absence of treatment options, we estimate that uh, the overall disease burden would increase by about 28% on a per patient per year basis. This is, again, an average of those 23 rare diseases. Compared to a scenario where uh, that rare disease is actually addressed by an approved therapy, some of the diseases we considered as more prevalent diseases to come up with that figure of about 7,000 euros per patient per year in societal burden for a larger disease are represented by diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, um, Alzheimer's disease, as well as some types of cancer as well. The first component is that rare diseases continue to be a significant amount of medical lead with only about 5% of these rare diseases that have an approved therapy. And not only the uh, unmet need is medical in nature, but it's also it but also generates a significant significant financial burden. So much so that a rare disease family and the system is impacted by an amount of, and a burden which is fifteen times higher than a more prevalent disorder. This is on an annual basis, and it's important to realize that if rare disease treatments. Uh, generate value to society because on average, they lower the burden by about 28%, as we've shown, it's fundamental to create the basis to a faster and a more expedited pathway for approval of rare disease therapies. One of the things that we have also looked at um, in, in our report uh, um, by looking at publicly available sources is um, the number of uh, um, rare disease treatments that have been developed in Europe over the last few years. How does that compare to the United States? How does that compare to China? And what is the amount of investments that flow into, into Europe compared to the other geographies? And we're seeing that despite Europe's continue, Europe continues to play a very significant role, that role does seem to be a little diminished compared to uh, the, the roles of the other two countries I mentioned, the United States and China. And because we have 36 million people affected by rare diseases in Europe, it's absolutely fundamental that Euro Europe finds uh, good ways and frameworks to collectively uh, generate more investments for, for rare diseases.